All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. We're finally back to talk about the Terror. We're on episode eight. It is called Terror Camp Clear. So full spoilers if you have not seen this episode. Holy shit. Does it go down? I was, in, I was tensed up through about the last third of this. Like I, like I haven't been since like the Reigns of Castamere on Game of Thrones. I did not know how this episode was going to end. I was so pleased with how the first part was going that by the time we got to the end, I mean, holy shit. How was this show not talked about and, and, and mentioned as much as other shows is fucking beyond me. <laughs> Because this is one of the best things I've seen. Like, if this came out this year, this would be in my top things of the year. Now, there is a new story coming out in, what, I think August or September. Um, I haven't watched a trailer for that, but I will be. I do watch TV trailers and game trailers, but no movie trailers. So, anyway, let's talk about this. So, I picked... There's going to be some pic different pictures up here because I got a lot to talk about. So... First off, we get this amazing scene with Tobias Menzies and Jared Harris. Couple of commanders just walking in this desolate, desolate place to another one of these kind of like, or maybe it was the same one, uh, of these kind of like message outposts. And just the conversation that two men at the, you know, in a very bleak situation being really honest with each other. It's, and this is really all Tobias Menzies acting here, where he's admitting all this stuff to Jared Harris. He's coming down on himself so hard and he's just being beating himself up and getting a whole bunch of things off his chest, confessing feelings that he's always felt and never said out loud. Things that British guys and just guys in general, let's just say that so we don't just pick on people. But it's known, you know, the oh, British people make jokes about it, that they hold in their feelings. And for this to happen, it's amazing to see him go through this with Jared Harris's character and admitting, you know, I'm not fully British. All these things, all, everything about me is kind of like phony. Everything I've done, you know, is just out of my own vanity. And him recognizing that, and then Jared Harris is Francis, not throwing it in his face and saying, you know, you're a good person and you, what you've done here and all the, everything that you've done doesn't matter. It's what we're doing now and how we're getting out of this. And it's just such a beautiful moment that's brought me almost to tears because, I mean, Tobias Menzies crying a little bit in this scene too. And it's just, you don't get to see this kind of vulnerability. And he, and, 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 and in such a show that you know is so bleak and doesn't gonna have, it's not gonna have a, a happy ending. It's the character moments like this in an, you know, this is eight episodes in and I feel more, again, like I've said it before, more about these characters than I do on other shows that I'm watching right now. Um, makes in the fact that this is like supposedly a horror show, right? And, and horror doesn't usually get this level of character and emotion and you care about the characters. Um, good and bad. So let's, let's, uh, so they get back to camp. And this is where they find out that the party, uh, that went out there with Hickey is dead and they're blaming the Eskimos. So I'm going to cut over to a different, uh, picture to talk about that area of the episode. So now that Crozier and Fitzjames are back at camp, they're having to deal with the fallout from the end of last episode where Hickey killed the lieutenant and the other guy. And now we find out that he killed all the Eskimos and he's come back with this story that they attacked them. Hickey is trying anything at this point to get what he wants. He's using a mutiny to try to humiliate the captain because of the captain lashing him. So he's using some very convenient wording and decisions made by the, the, the commanding officers, including Crozier, to rile up everything in his favor. Hickey is a fucking bastard. <laughs> and I hate him. And he has played so brilliantly, okay? Because it's like, I love it when we say, like, I hate that guy. But it's like our level of passion for our dislike for someone is only usually a testament to the actor. 
And the actor is killing it in this because I hate him so fucking much. The balls on this guy and the insanity that's going in the, in the level of vanity, like Tobias, you know, Tobias is Fitz James is talking about vanity. Good Lord. Now I know he got his ass thrashed, like literally. Okay. And maybe he didn't deserve that hard of a beating, but it takes a special kind of sociopath or psychopath to lead all these people down the same rabbit hole for your own ends. And that's what we, that's another awesome thing about all this is that Hickey has got this whole thing worked out and immediately, okay, it starts to fall apart because our guys aren't fucking stupid. Our characters aren't dum-dums. They are written to have this level of intelligence that they should have. So when Crozier has, since he's had dealings with the Eskimo, he knows this shit more than Hickey, who's just some guy who thinks he can just set them up like some fucking con back in London or something. These guys all recognize what an, an, an attack would look like. And so when they bring her in and they, she's like, this, my, my people didn't do this shit. <laughs> so it's immediately just done. And now they have to try to close ranks quickly because Hickey is poison. And in the very next part, he's, he's just immediately talking shit. He's never not talking because he's using fear, fear that, you know, of what's happening. And it's amazing. I you know, just thinking about that. I mean, it's, it is like how we would, how it would go. It's not a cliche in this case. This is how society falls apart. This is what happens when things get this bad. People turn on each other like a dime. And it's so sad to see it happening after all these episodes of the camaraderie that they've built under such crazy circumstances and all these things that should push them down to the lowest levels. Nothing ruins it like Hickey is doing right here. Fear. The final fear. And so... They quickly, though, get Hickey to take him out all the way to where everything was. Because, again, they gotta, they're got they doing things by the book, which is another amazing thing. Because in my story, Hickey would just get shot right in the fucking head. <laughs> like, but, but they're doing things properly. And, and it's maddening at times to watch things done, be done properly when you know that the bad guys don't follow those rules. They're always op looking in for a weakness or a momentary lapse in judgment and pause to give you an opportunity. But I guess that speaks more volumes about the good guys, how they're not willing to go down that road like other people. And so it's hard to watch some of these scenes going, just fucking kill him. Because even when they were out there in the middle of nowhere, I was like, when he called for guns before they took him out there, I was like, shit, they're going to ambush him. There's no cover. But when they get out there, they clearly see that these Eskimos were all fucking shot in the back. There's no struggle there. They all just fell. They're all serene. There's no blood. There's no chaos. It's all just such a poorly orchestrated crime scene. But they can't just kill him there. They have to do it in front of everybody so that they don't cause even more mutiny because just coming back and saying, oh, we killed him is just going to fuel the fire of the, the men who don't trust the commanders already. And it's also a, a nice to see that in this case, even though this is fictionalized, that the commanders actually do have their best interests at heart. That is, this isn't one of those things where, you know, if Franklin was still in charge, this would be a different story, I think. This would be all about the commanding officers in the end. And it would have turned out like that story that Blakey told uh, Fitzjames about the, how close that one Captain Ross almost got to being killed. Oh, so <laughs> they get him back. But during this time, the, one of the Marines that's on Hickey's side starts to try to go get very easily talked into letting the armory open because oh yeah you heard that noise didn't you oh yeah me too and it's just like oh well as long as we have a corroborating story you know when we go to open and take the guns we'll have witnesses it's all this like phony baloney shit that's just i was watching it going oh god <laughs> like once they get back they're all gonna have guns which they do and they almost kill them 
And then part of me was thinking, oh shit, once he goes, hey, it's us. I was like, I was waiting for the bullets to just zing, 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 like start flying, like crows are getting dropped like right away. So anyway, we we're going to put on another picture for the next part of the episode. Okay, I do really want to touch, quickly touch base on the fact that uh, we do have uh, Fitz James has got some pretty bad infections that he finds. And poor good sir. He, they, they're sending her away, which also raises some more questions in, in a minute. But poor good sir, he just wants her to stay. And I just felt so, I, I felt really close to, to good sir in this scene because he's the odd man out. He's the odd bird that like figured a lot of things out, the outsider that nobody really likes. And I just, I don't know, since I feel like that a lot of times, I've really gotten close to the good sir character because it's hard being a smart person in a, in a area full of stupid people and, and not being understood and him finding somebody that he can communicate with uh, is just, it's so sad when he has to leave and she has to push him away. Like, yeah, I understand you get it. You're a good guy, you know, uh, time to move on. And you can tell that him being the only doctor, he's also a bargaining chip in a lot of this stuff. Like everybody's going to need a doctor. So good sir, at least is, is safe for the minute in this situation because nobody wants to go out there without a doctor. But Hickey is now like, trying to get separated from everybody else. The, the interesting thing is, is when they go after him, I was expecting some big dramatic thing, but they just get him. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, so Hickey immediately, he does try to put his plan into action, starts telling everybody where to go, where to be, how many guns to have, who should have guns. But he gets taken pretty quickly. And so they end up having to set up a gallows. But first, just to even like add more insult to injury for Hickey's plan, in front of one of his own cohorts, they cut open the lieutenant that he murdered and finds the seal meat that was inside him barely digested, proving to one of his own mutineers that the story he came up with is bullshit. And now he's forced to either admit that he's a mutineer or go along with things. But he's also faced with the truth. The truth that... Hickey has only been about this for himself. And that's what happens here at the gallows. And But during this whole scene, I'm like, I'm checking everyone for fucking guns here, okay? I'm like, they all got fucking trench coats on. And they said that they were unarming everybody. And it does appear later on that they were. But it didn't change the fact that I was like on the edge of my seat throughout all of Francis's speech about Hickey's plan. And then he busts out the fucking seal meat that he stole, proving that he wasn't going to share it with anybody and that he would burn through all of these people just to get what he wants and it's just another great story like a great performance a great speech by jared harris as every point by point in the way that hickey has deceived them all but and he even admits to his own keeping things from his men but tells them why now it I thought at the time that everybody would have gone back from Hickey's side to the captains, but it appears that there are just some people that, you know, whether it's madness or fear or whatever, there's some of them are still sticking to his side. And so Hickey gets his turn to speak. And it's just like, again, it speaks to the content of his character and the quality of the acting that this guy just doesn't break. He just keeps going. As soon as he has the opportunity to talk, he starts talking shit. Now, I don't remember there being a secret plan. And maybe it was maybe mentioned off the cuff or something that he said in front of uh, Hickey, maybe really early on. It might even have been at that dinner uh, that they, well, not dinner, but when he offered him the alcohol and stuff that he didn't drink, remember? He kind of puts it down like this. Um, but either way, the, the Marine tries to back him up and it's just like, he, he just won't fucking stop. But people did volunteer to hang him. And it's just unfortunate. Like it, okay, so that whole time I'm going, something's gonna happen and I'm not gonna like it. Cause Francis is standing there like a fucking target. I didn't, I did hear the laughter earlier. And I was like, what is that? Oh God, what is that? But then it goes away and I'm like, well, maybe I didn't, I wasn't hearing things, but they all seem to react to it. So then the laughing stops again, starts again, sorry. 
And guy from the, the very first episode that went under the water to fix the engine or the propeller, he comes out of the, he's been having a real hard time with that whole lead poisoning, going crazy thing. He comes out of the fog laughing like a maniac with the goddamn bear thing, skinwalker, whatever, coming after him on his heels as it starts to tear through the whole camp. And the next whole bit is just in the fog, can't see shit, Walking Dead wishes their fog scene was as good as this. Because <laughs> this is how you do chaos in a fog. Yep, that episode was fine too. I'm just, I'm just giving Walking Dead a little bit of shit. Just a little twist of the knife. They can be shitty to us, I can be shitty to them. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> so, people are getting picked off. Characters are dying left and right. And just, I thought, okay, Crozier shot at frickin' Hickey. He, point blank. Did he hit him? I don't, it doesn't seem like he did, but he dropped the guns and ran. So they're basically gonna try to head off on their own. Meanwhile, the bear kills the guy who is having those delusions. He eats him and his face changes. So does that mean that anybody bit by this thing turns into it like a fucking werewolf? Or was he always it? Was this thing one, maybe them all along? I don't know, but it's fucking fascinating. And the, the, the Marine that was standing there looking at this happening saw the change on the face and ran off. Great goddamn episode. I will be getting to episode 9 and 10 in the next few days, hopefully on a new laptop camera. So this might be the last time, last video I make before uh, I get a new, my new equipment. So I, I almost want to finish the terror out on my phone just because. So I don't know how I feel about the, how, if I'm going to do that or not. But future episodes should be all on an HD laptop camera that I have that I'm getting today. So also we got Toy Story 4 review coming, so it's going to be a busy day. So if you liked this review, because I loved making this review a lot. Um, in fact, let's, let's go over to now that we, oh, and fucking, okay, there's one more thing. <laughs> We're just not even going to pause, okay? We're not even going to pause because, come on, give it to me. Where is it? There we go. Okay, yes. This part right here. <laughs> Fitz James busts out some firework rockets at this thing. It's just, this episode had everything that I could possibly want in a good episode of television. And again, it, why aren't people talking about this? I've been bringing it up to people, as many people that would listen. I am mad at myself for not making a greater effort and watching it the first time around. Otherwise, because these videos then would be not needed to be made yet anymore. So anyway, if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, please share. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out. We're one away from 700 as I'm talking right now. Who wouldn't want to be number 700? No pressure. <laughs> Otherwise, ah, I'm always messing with my hair. This is Robin Smirking Gun Review saying we'll be back with another video later. Otherwise, have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Peace out.